Good afternoon and welcome to today's edition of Joy Business Masterclass. Masterclass is powered by Joy Business and brought to us by Goyle. Goyle, good energy, Goyle, Genera, Yedia. Masterclass comes your way every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. and runs all the way through to 2.15 p.m. here on your superstation Joy 99.7. My name as always is Yabana Fu and I'm excited to be your host for today's edition of Masterclass. Last month, we spent time going out onto the streets in what we termed as a startup dialogue series, where we spoke to entrepreneurs on the street to find out how all the business principles we share here on the show connect, if you like, to the actual and real business environment. We spent time talking to Akosia Sechiejekum, who's the CEO of Nwesa Shoes. We also spent some time talking to Yusif Mezongo Jr., who is the CEO of Maison Yusif, I beg your pardon. And then we went on to speak to Bwahima in team, who was also the CEO or a manufacturer of NutriHealth, and they are into the manufacture of tea, using hibiscus as a base and creating variants. Last week, we had the privilege of speaking with Emmanuel Okeleji, who is the CEO of a company called Seamless HR, essentially bringing solutions from HR to help in the management of various companies. We're back in the classroom again, back to teach you some business principles. And today, we're going to be talking about an important topic stakeholder management, stakeholder management under project management. Uh, we have back here with us in the studio someone who has become a friend of the show. When we have this conversation here on project management, he obliged us as with his time, and today he's back here to talk to us about stakeholder management. I remember one of the things he said when we started to talk earlier about project management was that pretty much everything in life can be looked at as a project, depending on how you look at it. And essentially today we're going to be looking at who are the stakeholders of every and any project, and what is a role that they play. With me in the, in the studio this afternoon is Latif Abubakar, who's a playwright, C, also the CEO of Globe Management Institute. Latif. My brother. You're welcome back. Stacy, <laughs> welcome back yes. to Masterclass. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're excited to have was, you back. Yeah, um, it's a pleasure. Stakeholder management is, is, is one of those conversations that cuts across every sphere of conversation. I mean, even if it's a one-hour meeting, you can you can draw a connect between you know stakeholders and something as short as a one hour meeting, mm -hmm. but today we're going to be talking about stakeholder management under the umbrella of how to understand their world, the world yeah. of stakeholders, yeah. Yeah. and I, I suppose that it will be fair to just put out there that at one point or the other, just like the word customer has become a statement that affects all of us, we're all mm -hmm. customers at some point. Mm -hmm. I dare say. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm happy to be corrected this afternoon, yeah. that at one point or the other, we all become stakeholders of one or more processes. Yes. But everybody. you talk to us. Yeah. Take us away. You've got some slides. You've obliged us a couple of slides. Yeah. We're streaming live on Facebook. For those who want to follow us on Facebook, Latif has given us some slides. So by all means, do be a part of this conversation. And when we get interactive, we open the phone lines. We also open our social media channels and you can join us. Today, we talk about stakeholder management. Yeah. So... Um, the word, the word stakeholder actually was first used in management literature mm. uh, in 1963 in an international memorandum at Stanford Research Institute. Um, that was by um, two people called, uh, two people who wrote a paper for that um, project called Robert and Arun. Mm. So I, I like acknowledging them because stakeholder has become a very important aspect of our life. Stakeholder management has become a very important aspect of our life. Mm. Because within your family, there must be proper stakeholder management. So it's just like we talked about projects. Mm. You can't do away with stakeholders or stakeholder management, wherever you, whatever you do in life. Whether your personal things you do or work issues, marriage issues, it's all about stakeholder management so wherever you are you'd better at least get a basic understanding on how to manage the process of stakeholders one way or the other i always say that every work begins with stakeholder management every work begins with a stakeholder management process that is if you are given the nod to begin a particular work the first thing you do is to begin stakeholder management processes mm. So, and the not is basically the contract you're giving or the project charter, mm. as, a, as project managers would term it, mm -hmm. that you're giving to, uh, as an authorized means of you starting work. Mm. If you're giving the not as, um, as the contractor, as the project manager, or what have you, what you do first on every project is stakeholder 
management process. That's the first process that begins. Mm. And we are saying that stakeholder management has become ultimately important because the success of every work depends on stakeholder satisfaction. Let me ask this though, just just so that we build from there as an understanding. Maybe this, this, someone listening this afternoon and the word stakeholder, they've heard it, but you know, there's no connection between the word. What would be a synonym for the word stakeholder? Partaker? Yes. Member so, of? Member of. So we, we, okay, so it leads us to the definition of a stakeholder. Mm. And it says that anybody at all that the work can affect or that the person can affect the work. Good. Positively or negatively, Good. will be termed as a stakeholder. So either so the process can affect, affect you, you, or you, or can, you affect can affect the process. You are a stakeholder. You, are, you become a stakeholder. Okay. And so I mean, the fact that it will affect whether positively or negatively automatically makes you what a stakeholder. So in identifying stakeholders, that is actually what we look out for mm. in the world of stakeholders, one way or the other. But I was talking about the ultimate factor why stakeholder management is important. At first, when it comes to work. And projects. We define the success of work and projects by saying that when you execute when you execute it on time, within budget and to specification, it means you have succeeded. Now it's gone beyond that. Okay. Executing a work or project on time within budget and to specification does not guarantee the success of the project or the work you're doing. Mm -hmm. Your only guarantee is when stakeholders are satisfied stakeholder satisfaction or when you meet stakeholders requirements that is your only guarantee some people might say why so and i always ask two questions one there's a particular market that was built long ago mm. during kufo's era mm. that is not being used up to now but the market was sponsored by the world bank it was built on time mm -hmm. within budget and to specification. But the market is not being used because the market people who are supposed to go work there are refusing to go to sell at that place. Would you call it a successful project or not? It's interesting you bring this perspective, you know, because if, and it's true, I'm not questioning it, but if the, the disenchantment of the stakeholder is critical enough to affect the success of it, project then quite a few of our projects in town um are suffering from a certain syndrome of unsuccessfulness of, uh, yes because like, we because we build bridges and people won't use the bridges exactly they prefer to cross the road exactly I'll walk, okay anyway i'll ask questions now please continue <laughs> so, i'll write so, the question that way so <laughs> so we say that and i ask and because people do argue people have their points but then i move further and ask that assuming you you decide to build a house for your family you build a very beautiful house that meets your specification then your wife and children say they won't stay in that house do you think you've succeeded in building your dream house well if the people you're building it for say they don't <laughs> you know <laughs> so, yeah. so now it's moves but you built it on time within budget and to your specification you understand so that's why we say that it's moved just beyond those three things that we usually refer to as the triple constraint scope time cost mm. to the satisfaction of stakeholders that tells you how important the stakeholder management process is relevant in this current uh, i mean i mean uh, world of projects and, and mm. work that we how do things are changing the world over so i mean I, what i hear you say is that because this is has become the the should i say the satisfaction of the stakeholder has become an important part of the conversation then at the very beginning of the process that conversation must be had yeah Exactly. That's why I'm saying that you can't start work without stakeholder management. The first thing you do when you are giving the nod to start work is to begin the stakeholder management process. You understand? So you should begin the stake and the first thing within the stakeholder management process is identifying stakeholders. So that's the first thing. Can but you liken that for me to um, one of my listeners this afternoon who imports ladies' shoes mm -hmm. or shirts for men or wigs for women? How would what we have just discussed affect them? What should they do in terms of stakeholder consultation before? So, so mostly before you begin imports, you do your research to find mm. out your market. Mm. 
And as part of your market research, of course, you're going to speak to possible stakeholders to find out whether people really like it. It is the demand that makes you go to import. So the demand means that you've done a research. You have a basic fundamental research that tells you it might not be our, let's say our traders in the market. Mm -hmm. not, they don't go do, they, they don't do paper, proper research, mm -hmm. but they have a way of knowing that there's demand in the market because right. of how people come to ask about that, pro that product. Mm -hmm. So that is how you begin documenting your stakeholders from, right. from, the, from the research document, whether verbally or quantitatively or whatever, or qualitatively. That is how you begin documenting your stakeholder process. Those people who are, are asking for the product mm -hmm. becomes your primary stakeholders. It is, for, it is because of them you are traveling to go and import. And I'm sure she's done that. Mm -hmm. She knows that there's a market for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the market becomes, the market components becomes, uh, it's, it's what helps you define your stakeholders. The direction the you direction should go. Of, yes, exactly. So it's important, regardless of what you are doing, regardless of the line of business, what we're saying this afternoon is that there has to be some kind of stakeholder, and your stakeholders here would be the people you are doing it for. That kind of engagement must take place before you invest. Yeah. And yeah, then you take definitely. the step. Please continue. The project manager or the leader, the CEO, leads the uh, stakeholder management process most most often and he is responsible for the success and failure of the process when it comes to stakeholder management so mm -hmm. that's one of the key things we always look out for when we talk about stakeholders now that we've talked about when a project is said to be successful when a work is said to be successful because we said that a w any work is said to be successful only when stakeholders are satisfied because there are certain times you go beyond budget. I'm sure you work on projects. There are certain times you go beyond budget. <laughs> you go um, ahead of, you, 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 are, you are behind shadow. Mm -hmm. And you have to change the scope. Yeah. But if stakeholders are okay with these parameters, automatically you succeed. So the, the question of when, when a project is said to be successful mm -hmm. or any work is said to be successful has been an answered by the fact that stakeholders must be what? Satisfied. satisfied that is all. With it. it can go beyond time, budget, etc. But if stakeholders are satisfied, then you can say you're yeah, okay. So but it, al it also goes without saying that the stakeholders, depending on what the expectation is, can also um, base their satisfaction on the three things you've talked oh, about. Oh, yes, exactly. Right. So the stakeholders can also base their satisfaction on the three things that we talked about. You, you, let's say you, you did it in time yes. and you kept to the scope. But it took too long. You know, it cost me too much. Too much. Uh -huh. Or the other way. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. They yeah, so they can, they can also base their whatever. The most important thing is it's a process. If you engage them through the process, you know exactly what they want. And then point you point will be able yeah. to meet their requirements at every point in time. Brilliant. So then one may ask, who are these stakeholders? Mm. How do you categorize them yes. one way or the other? So we have the sponsor. Usually, the person who gives out the money mm -hmm. is seen as a stakeholder. We also have the management team. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, I mean, management team. Mm -hmm. but then we have the project team, those who actually do the work on the, the ground. Yeah. Then, aside the project team, we have the project manager, mm -hmm. obviously. Then, we also have one of my int the interesting aspects of stakeholder identification are the information providers mm -hmm. that people usually don't think about. The... For me, I always say they are critical. If I'm doing any project in, let's say, in a village or in, in a village setting, mm -hmm. the information provider is critical as a stakeholder. We mostly forget them. So, for instance, the linguist, he disseminates information to people. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure he gets things right mm -hmm. and understands your project and buys into your project. Assuming I'm working on a government project, interestingly, mm -hmm. um, sometimes we may... Not now, I'm just using this vaguely. Some journalists, popular mm -hmm. journalists that have huge followers, mm -hmm. can be information providers that you need to manage when you're working on government projects. Yeah. Because whatever they say or whatever utterances they make on radio, on air, can actually mm -hmm. affect your project. When we say affect, it can affect the scope, the time, mm -hmm. and then the budget. It can even create project. stakeholder enchantment or disenchantment. Exactly, on your project. project. So information providers are critical anytime you are working on projects. And then we have the performing organization, mm -hmm. the organization that does the job. Mostly it is not the sponsor that always, I mean, uh, execute the project or the work that you are mm -hmm. talking about. It can, be a it can be sponsored by World Bank. 
a government of Ghana project, mm-hmm. and there will be a, con- a construction firm or an IT firm or an event organizer mm-hmm. that implements the the, the project one way or the other. Yeah. So the performing organization is also identified as a, as a stakeholder. So mm-hmm. you're able to derive your stakeholders with this generic list of mm-hmm. stakeholders. Then you can now build on to to come up with mm-hmm. various other type of stakeholders that you can identify on your project. Mm-hmm. There are processes we go through to when it comes to stakeholder management. The first process is to identify stakeholders. The second process is to plan stakeholder engagement. So when you identify the stakeholders, you plan stakeholder engagement. The second is manage stakeholder engagement. And then the third is monitor stakeholder engagement. Okay. So you identify, you identify, you plan, you, plan, you manage, manage, and, and then, then you monitor. monitor. So when you identify, it gives you the list, the list of the stakeholders. Mm-hmm. After getting the list of the stakeholders, now you plan how you're going to manage them. Mm-hmm. You understand? In the process of, then you begin managing them during executing. Mm-hmm. Then once you are managing them, remember you have to monitor mm-hmm. their actions because there will be issues coming up once you are managing exactly. stakeholders exactly. that you need to resolve. There will be conflicts that you need to manage. So that is also another aspect. I mean, over the next uh, weeks, I mean, we'll be tackling these processes one by one. But today, definitely, we'll be talking about how to identify the stakeholders that we are talking about. How do we go about identifying the stakeholders? It's one of the major things that we we'll love to talk about. So again, I'm saying that when it comes to the project, uh, the, the stakeholder management process has been categorized into identify stakeholders, plan stakeholder engagement, then we have money stakeholder engagement, and then monitor stakeholder engagement. Mm-hmm. So definitely, people would like to know how we go about this. Mm-hmm. Because one of the things that we try to do with a, ma- with a master class like this is to make sure it's practical. Exactly. To the extent that after this session, you should be able to go and apply whatever you've learned exactly. at work. And become better for it. Exactly. So, identify stakeholders. Identify stakeholders talks about the fact that one needs to be able to figure out all the stakeholders that may affect your project positively or negatively. Mm-hmm. Or one needs to figure out all the people that may affect your project positively or negatively. That, or you people can do, that you can't do without. That you can't do without. Or mm-hmm. people that the project might affect. That is how come maybe you realize that when we are going to construct a road, government sometimes will be compensating even the traders by the roadside. Yes. Ah, because they've been identified as stakeholders because at the end of the day, the project might affect them. And then it might affect their livelihood one way or the other. But so we look at all those things when we are identifying stakeholders. Mm-hmm. Identifying stakeholders, someone may ask, again, why do we need to identify all the stakeholders before the project begins? Mm-hmm. There are two important reasons why you need to identify all stakeholders. Because if you don't identify them early, you will definitely come across them <laughs> whilst you're embarking on the project. <laughs> and if you come across them, it might cause delay on your project. And then sometimes it might cost you. Mm-hmm. Remember, the cost of um, the, 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 what's the name? The cost of, uh, of a project yes. increases or the, the cost of changes on every project increases with time. Yes. So if you identify them and they come up with their issues early, mm-hmm. you'll be able to include it as early as possible. But if you refuse to identify them early and they come up with their issues at the latter part, imagine if you're doing a building project Mm -hmm. and you're done with the design, (laughs) you've started putting up the structure and then now you identify there's a stakeholder that comes that has very good influence and power. Mm -hmm. What would you do? And he he needs a particular change to be done. I'm smiling because I know... (laughs) I've had a practical experience ah. about that. But I suppose the point I wanted to make was that that's why you find that some of the mining companies have a whole dedicated effort towards community relations. They exactly. call it community relations. Relation. 
Yes. Just because of the point you made. Exactly. They are stakeholders. That is it. So, for, for me, I always say it is always best for you. Of course, we are humans. You mm. can't identify all the stakeholders. Definitely some might come up. But we use the word all for you to know that you should put maximum effort. To the best of your ability. Exactly. To make sure everybody is identified. Mm -hmm. And there are various ways by which you can identify stakeholders. Mm -hmm. We call it the tools and techniques we use to identify stakeholders. Mm -hmm. You understand? One, you can use questionnaires and surveys. Yeah. You know, to be able to get people to give you stakeholders that can relate to the project you're embarking on. You can even do what we call look out for historical data. If a similar project has been embarked on um, in your organization, mm -hmm. or you check on Google or do a research, yeah. You can be able to tease out certain stakeholders. I mean, learnings from exactly. So what you do is that you adapt. You don't just go and copy and paste. You adapt it, read and see whether it makes sense to your recent mm -hmm. project that you are going on. So that is also another way of what identifying stakeholders. So with using the questionnaires and surveys, then using the um, historical information, an expert can also help you. Someone who has done that project over and over and over mm. can easily come up and help you also what identify the stakeholders so that is basically what we do we call it the stakeholder analysis process where we try to figure out analyze to find out whether mr a is a stakeholder or not mm. at the end of the day all that we are looking out for is a tall list of stakeholders so list of stakeholders mm. that we will refer to as the stakeholder register Right. So, we identify stakeholders only to come up with a document called the Stakeholder Register. It is not just about their names. A proper stakeholder register has a list of stakeholders and then their names, their needs, wants, and expectations. So, the needs, wants, and expectations is what we will turn into requirements of the project. Mm -hmm. So, whilst you're identifying the stakeholder, you're trying to gather their requirements based on their needs, wants, and expectations. Mm -hmm. Then you look out for their influence and then their interest. Mm -hmm. Because that will actually help you know how to manage them yes. in future, one way or the other. So, a, a very good stakeholder register would have these columns for you to fill after mm -hmm. identifying them and then also their contacts so that you can reach out to them at any point in time. I mean, and as you say that, what comes to my mind is that if the register is done properly and there is a disconnect or dissonance between the expectations of any of the stakeholders, mm -hmm. it gives you the opportunity to address same. Easily. Easily. Before it becomes an issue. Exactly. Exactly. So, for me, we always say that it is a very good process because at the end of the day, having every stakeholder mm -hmm. and knowing their requirements their interest and influence gives you a very good starting point for every project yeah. you understand because you that is like a buy-in mm -hmm. an inclusive buy-in of all the stakeholders yeah. for you to start one of the things we also do in trying to gather um, um, list of stakeholders is to do brainstorming or brain writing brainstorming is coming up to, I mean teaming together to come up with stakeholders and then the mm. brain writing is basically individuals trying to figure out mm. write down the various stakeholders they can think about on on, on a project so right. at the end of the day at least we can say that we have a tall list of stakeholders it doesn't end there when you have a tall list of stakeholders like mm. i said the other important aspects of stakeholder management is basically uh, of stakeholder identification it's how you could manage them mm -hmm. so after we identify the stakeholders and collected and we've collected their needs wants and expectations we sometimes develop what we call the stakeholder mapping strategy mm -hmm. the stakeholder mapping strategy would help anybody at all to be able to manage your stakeholders so it helps in the process of managing stakeholders because the stakeholder management mapping strategy helps us get a, 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 a diagram we, we refer to as the power interest grid. Right. You understand? And the essence of the power interest grid is, to for, is for you to be able to categorize 
each stakeholder based on their power and interest or based on their power and influence. So some people will call it the power interest grid. Okay. Others will call it the power influence grid. So going back a bit, I'm saying that uh, because stakeholder management process is extremely important on every project and it's the first thing you would do if you are given the nod to begin work. If you're give, immediately you're given the nod to begin work, then it means that you must also begin the process of stakeholder management. management. And the first thing you will do is to what? Identify the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. In identifying the stakeholders, we will be able to apply brainstorming, brain, uh, uh, brain writing, mm -hmm. um, stakeholder analysis, questionnaire surveys, expert judgment, and that will help us come up with what? A tall list. Of stakeholders on our projects, their contacts and their, their expectations. Their contacts, their expectations, requirements, mm -hmm. influence, and interest. Interest. So that it would help you build what we call the stakeholder mapping strategy. You understand? And an example of the stakeholder mapping strategy is what we refer to as the power interest grid. The power interest grid or the power influence grid. So, I don't know how we can um, showcase the power influence. No, we're streaming live. So, ah. I, I, yeah, I'm sure that the slides will show. Okay. Yeah, okay. we're streaming live. Okay, good. So, if you look at the power interest grade, the power interest grade is supposed to categorize stakeholders into four. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we waste our time on stakeholders that have low power Low interest. <laughs> you know, I, I just typed the question. I was <laughs> going to ask you that. What happens when you have, but I was leaving it for the, for ah, the, for the conversation. Okay, so sometimes we waste our time on stakeholders that, in quotes, are not very important. Mm -hmm. And then we end up losing the most important stakeholders. That is the essence of the power interest grade. It's for us to be able to categorize stakeholders into four so that we are able to know which of the six stakeholders should we give close marking and keep very satisfied so these are the stakeholders with high power high interest we must give them very 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 close marking make sure they are what satisfied properly and then give them and then we are in contact with them often mm. very often let's say if, if it's a if it's a um, a six-man project every week you are in contact with such a stakeholder you understand then there's another column so it, um, that's the first column the ones that you are in close contact with. Mm -hmm. So you categorize the stakeholders in there. The second one is the stakeholders that you can look at, that you can see you would might keep them satisfied, um, manage them moderately. Mm -hmm. So I if you are doing one week for these people, for this group of stakeholders, you might be doing every two weeks or every three weeks. Okay. Uh -huh. And then there's that category of people where you might be doing monthly. Mm -hmm. You keep them informed every month. Then there's the final one with low power, low interest, where you keep them information as and when, because you, you put in minimum effort in in what interacting with them. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they even come for information at their discretion. Okay. Mind you, the people in that category can be the loudest. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> and they might distract you. Mm -hmm. Because they would complain the most and they would make noise the most and then you end up spending your time trying to satisfy them. Meanwhile, the most important people, like the sponsor, mm -hmm. who, which, who is categorized under high power, high interest, would, 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 would not have that kind of attention mm -hmm. because these people within the low power, low interest have taken your attention. That oh. is one of the core reasons mm -hmm. for the power interest grade. Great so that at least you know who you would going to spend much time with and then mm. if two people are calling you based on the grade you know who you should respond where to. should you go <laughs> where should you go i'm particularly well, interested in the grade and i'd like you to spend a bit more time on it but okay. i want our listeners to also be a part of this conversation okay. so what we'll do is that we'll take a quick message from our sponsors when we come back we get interactive <laughs> Your favorite on-air business development program, Joy Business Masterclass, is in session. And you can interact with us on Facebook, 
via the Joy 99.7 FM or Joy Business pages. If you tweet, the handle is at Joy 997 FM or at Joy Business GH. Don't forget to hashtag JB Masterclass. You can also call us on 0302 21 6541 or send your questions and contributions through to the WhatsApp number 0551 111997 and our facilitators will address your concerns. Attention everyone, class is in progress. Welcome back. If you've just tuned in, this is Masterclass. We're here in the studio with Latif Abubakar. We're talking about stakeholder management, understanding the stakeholders' world. Phone lines are now open. We want you to be a part of that conversation. Pick up that phone, give us a call. Every single thing can be looked at as a project, and every single process has stakeholders. So clearly, um, you can be a part of that conversation. Pick up that phone, give us a call. Numbers to call 0302216541. That's 0302216541. You can also send us your comments on 055. One 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 nine nine seven. That's zero five five one 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 nine nine seven. If you have a motor vehicle of any kind, then Goyle has some great news for you. What do you do when your vehicle runs out of fuel? Do you just stop anywhere? If that's what you do, then please don't do that anymore. Let us introduce you to the good energy family and why you must be a part of it. Goyle Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP are the best quality fuels with high performance in town for your vehicle. Goyle Super XP Run 95 is a high-grade fuel sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goyle's Diesel XP is low in sulfur, making it an eco-friendly option for your vehicle. With over 440 stations across the nation, we ask that you join the family that rewards you with quality for an energized driving experience. Goyle, good energy, Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. Phone lines are still open, numbers to call 0302 216 or you can send us your comments on 05511. One one nine nine seven. I've got a comment on social media. When I asked for synonyms on stakeholder, um, you didn't add your name. I think the person said, uh, "Interesting." Uh, so what? Interested parties. parties. I think that's because brilliant. That's actually quite brilliant. Yeah, but uh, so, but it leaves out one version of the stakeholders, which is the those who are not uninterested, interested, but they are still valid. affected. They are still affected. Okay, <laughs> so, okay, so there you go. Why, that's why we don't like defining stakeholders by in using the word interest in interested parties. Right. Okay. So that's Nick. Nick, yeah. thank you so much for reaching out to us. Uh, phone lines are still open. That numbers to call 0302216541. Um, and you can send us your comments on 0551111997. I mean, thankfully, you're going to be with us um, for the next couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. So even though we have a few more slides to go, um, okay, I, I think you've actually run through your slides. Oh, yeah. You're done with the slides. <laughs> I have a few questions and I'm waiting for my phone lines to ring so that my, my listeners can be a part of it. You're an entrepreneur you're a business owner you have questions to ask who are your stakeholders and what you're doing how do you understand you know them as your stakeholders what role do they play pick up that phone let's have a conversation so that our businesses can become better for it so i know we've talked about this but i'm just going to try and run through these set of questions real quick until the phone phone, phone call comes through so who is a stakeholder can we just establish that very briefly um, someone that the project might affect or the work might affect or someone who that can affect the work, affect the work. <laughs> that's really simple. so whatever you are doing if it can affect you or you can affect it you're a stakeholder yes exactly so that's so there, there are stakeholders who have yes. been you know and are not aware of yeah, yeah. that something is going yeah. on and it yeah, affects later them on it affect, yes exactly for for instance the climate change issue <laughs> <laughs> so, right yes and then yeah the carbon emission issues yeah. that we are talking about and even the yes. waste management issue the waste you know, management issue whenever yes, you exactly. you dump things into the gutter in front of your house yeah, yeah. you are creating problems for somebody down the line yes, exactly. and when the, when the flood comes it affects that person yeah. just so we are on the same page what is a stake it's a lot of english can we explain it? When I say you have a stake in something, what does it mean? Uh, you, are, you have uh, an interest. You have right. You have an interest. You have right. Okay. Uh, yeah. You have in, a part, part in something. In it. Yes. You have. Okay. Uh, yes. Part. Yes. You have an interest, maybe, in something. So if, if let's say, everybody was putting um, pieces together to make a whole, you, you have a piece in there. Yes. And right. then, so you have a piece in there. That you are aware of or might not be aware of. And you're entitled to be at that table whether yes. you are aware of it or, or not. not. Exactly. Brilliant. So that's what a stake because is. Because at the end of the day, sometimes you're not aware of it. But when it hits you, that's when it says, Aish. Uh -huh. So that's what happens. You know, I know that when you spoke about the power um, mapping grid, yeah. um, we made certain statements. And I know they're in context. But just mm -hmm. to emphasize so that we're not misunderstood. Is any stakeholder ever unimportant? Because I think we made a statement that we said um, the important ones and the non-important ones. But is 
it's so, in context, but can we so, just emphasize the context? So what we what what you must know is that the stakeholder management process is an ongoing process from the beginning of every project or every work till the end. So you keep doing stakeholder management continuously because Throughout. new stakeholders keep cropping up as you progress. You understand? And some are deleted. They've no more become stakeholders. Mm. So the unimportant stakeholders are people that can move out mm. easily of what? Your your low power, low interest grade. Mm. The people within the low power, low interest are considered not unimportant. They are but considered as low power, low interest. But, but in the scheme of things. In the scheme of things, so they yes. are not important. So they are all important, but some are more. Of course, some are more powerful. So it's it's like we have the 100, we have the 70, we have Brilliant. the 50, and then we have the 30. So everybody has a place. Yes, everybody has I've a place. I've got Millie on social media. Millie says stakeholders are people who have interest in your business. I think that's also a correct answer. Yes, isn't it's a it? correct answer. Brilliant. Thank you, Millie, for reaching answer. out to us. Um, yeah. Phone lines are still open. Numbers yeah. to call 0302. So, so, but what we should know yes. is that the the grid mm. goes wrong. It rotates. It, rot- it can easily rotate. Not that it compulsory rotates. So mm. someone within the low power, low interest, with 30% maybe power or, or interest, can move to 50, to 70, or 200 and politics right. has shown us that. Right. The dynamics can <laughs> the change. The dynamics can change and someone can easily become a DC or a minister and so on Okay, and so let on. me ask this other question while I'm waiting for the phone lines. Phone lines are still open. Numbers to call 0302216541. You can also send us your comments on 055 At what point do we draw a balance between stakeholder manage, stakeholder disenchantment and the project balance? Okay, I've got, before you answer that, I've got Edmond Awaiti from on social media. Edmond says, Let's answer Edmond's question. He says, good afternoon, Masterclass. What role should public relations play strategically in the management of stakeholder expectations from Edmond Awaiti? So, like you said, the mining companies, yes. what they do, community engagement, it's part of PR. Right. Yeah, but they are looking, they, they will be now be talking about development communication, mm-hmm. one way or the other. And I think that it plays a very significant role. It's just that sometimes we should do the pre than the post. So the PR in terms of whatever you want to do, if you want to sensitize people and so on and so forth, should be done. I mean, I'll share this example. I don't know which company, and I'm not going to mention names, but I think out of a similar process that you talk about, stakeholder engagement, yeah. there was a mining company in this country who were going to ca- take out um, exploration on a certain piece of land. And out of the community in- engagement, the position of the community was that if you're going to take our land and explore it, mm-hmm. then relocate us and compensate us. Yeah. And I was shocked to find out. If I mention the, the the location in this country, you know which company I'm talking <laughs> about. They put up a whole village mm-hmm. with houses and roads, schools, bakeries, listen, hospitals. And I know this because I went there. It was like before before the people went in there, it was yeah. empty, like a ghost town. And this was done, inspected, accepted by the stakeholders before they hit the ground with the first axe. Wow. I mean, I thought that was impressive. I, mean, I, very I thought impressive. I'll, I'll share very, that as an very, example. Very, very impressive. Nick, um, PMP. Thank you, Nick. Uh, okay, hey. so Nick has done his PMP. PMP. Nick says, nice delivery. This is PMP stuff. Every company must use it. Thank you very Thank much, you. Nick, uh, for reaching Thank out. Um, so, yes, uh, I was asking, where do you draw the balance between stakeholder disenchantment and project balance? Um, where do we draw the balance? I'm asking that question because, for example, if you allow stakeholder disenchantment Un- uncontrolled, yeah, and um, it will sway the entire project. And sometimes some of the disenchantment is really unfounded. Unfounded, yeah. So, at what point do you draw? How do you draw the balance? You know. Um, so, see, you draw. I, I keep telling people that you draw the balance by by using um, what, what do you call it? What is at your disposal is basically um, the the skills and knowledge you have acquired on how to manage your stakeholders. So engage how. To, Proper engagement. Engage. And basically, like we said, proper engagement, knowing who is more important than the other. Mm. Because if you look at, if you if you segment your stakeholders properly, you realize that there are certain people who have influence over certain people. Mm. Nicely. So when you're engaging, you should know also how to engage the most influential people to help you engage the less influential people who, who might be making noise even than the influential people. And I think that that is actually the bottom line. It's constant engagement mm. and, and, and 
trying to get people to understand whatever project you're embarking on. That is what is important. And it has to be done early. It mostly has to be done early. Because sometimes you wait for the for trouble and then before we begin what the engagement process. Exactly. And it becomes very difficult for you to be able to achieve success. I've got a few more minutes on my clock. I'd, I'd really like to speak to someone on this on this ah. subject. Numbers to call 0302216511. Please pick up that phone. Give me a call. Let's hear your thoughts. Otherwise, you can still send us your comments on 055-111-1997. I've got a jingle. Um, okay. A jingle says, good afternoon, Master Class. Another great discussion. My question is... Um, I'm trying to understand your question. Mm-hmm. Jingo. I own shares in a certain company. Uh-huh. If one owns a shares in a certain company, can he or she be described as a stakeholder? Yes. By all means. Yes, by all Jingo, means. The answer is yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The answer stakeholder. to your question is yes. So yes, that yes. company that you bought shares in, Ajingo, you are a stakeholder. Go and <laughs> go to the general meeting and go and ask questions. Yes, you are a stakeholder. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It just depends on your how your influence, your power in that particular company. Yeah. But you are a stakeholder. Right. That's, that's definitely a stakeholder. Okay. I've got another um, another question here mm-hmm. on social media. Okay, that's the, I think the person is still trying to type the question. Um, what happens when a stakeholder has low interest and high power? Low interest and high power. That's why I was saying that those are people that you give, you monitor closely. Mm. You understand? So as much as you have people that have high power, high interest that mm-hmm. you give proper attention to, the mm. next in command are people with high power, mm. low interest. Because high power means that he can cause He a can change. pull the plug. Yes, he can put the plug on your project. So there are people also that you need to really. They are like the second in command after high power, high interest people. They don't, they don't talk too much. But you don't, don't talk too but much. <laughs> because maybe the person does not really care about the project. But you don't want but to cross them. Yes, but you don't want to cross them. Because if you cross them, they can take action. I've got Glenda. Uh, Glenda says... Please, what do you do if it becomes difficult to manage stakeholders in a project? Latif is laughing. It means that <laughs> he gets this question a lot. Yes, you get because <laughs> yes, there are, there are times. So it's more about experience. Mm. So, for instance, we embarked on a project. We're given a project to uh, uh, work on, and it was purely stakeholder engagement and management. A company has gone to build a borehole. They, they went in with a stakeholder management research document. It means that they did their own stakeholder analysis. They went through the stakeholder management processes correctly. F- because of that, they were able to build a boho. And they finished, build it on time, um, within budget and to specification. After building the boho, the people in the community are not using the boho. So, At all? Yes, they are not using the ball. So now, it's like stakeholder management gone wrong. So what do you do? It boils down to experience. If with, with experience and you managing various scenarios, you should be able to. So you know what was the result? We went in and then we found out that these people, so definitely going in means that you must develop a strategy mm. on how best you can resolve find out what the real reason is and how you can resolve it period we spent some time with a with a woman there because we took a woman and then we spent some time with a woman and then realized that their interest is basically to go to the riverside their their interest of going to the riverside to fetch water and wash is because that is the only time they get to have conversations among themselves social dynamics and that is the only time neglected. and that's the only time they can talk about things. You and understand? That's necessary. And uh, yes, and it's very necessary because the borehole was closer to the where they stay. So immediately you fetch water, you are home. And the cast is on <laughs> the case is, No <laughs> way. You understand? So but if you don't if you don't per experience, if you don't go deep, so you have to plant someone who also would go with so them. So what did you do? Did yeah. you move the borehole to the riverside? Yeah, I'm yeah, just so, kidding. But yeah, no, no, that was the solution. You moved the borehole yeah, to the yeah, riverside? You had to, you had to move a borehole closer, not to the riverside. Closer because the river was not fit for purpose. Right. In terms of drinking and what have you. So compulsory, you must do something that will satisfy them. You just move it away at a distance, not directly closer to, for them to feel that at least there's a space between the home. And they can even get the exercise also. You see, we take these things for granted. For granted. Yes, exactly. 
So for me, it's more about to a question. It's more about experience and the person who is handling it. Because you see, you can go through the textbook and use the same skills. But on the field, there are so many things that you bring to bear. Communication skills, PR skills, and so on and so forth that you can bring to bear for you to be able to succeed. I think if we remember nothing from today's conversation, what do we take away and what are we looking forward to in our conversation? Uh, God the fact next that week. you cannot begin a project without a stakeholder management process. Mm. If you are giving the nod to start any work, the first thing you try to do, the first thing you do, not you try, the first thing you do is to make sure you begin the stakeholder management process, which also begins with identifying stakeholders so that at least you have a tall list of every stake or almost all the stakeholders that you will need on the project. Mm. Again, we are saying that stakeholder management is an ongoing process. And it's, it's ongoing because it is done from the beginning of the project till the project ends. Mm. We spoke about the processes you go through for proper stakeholder management. Mm -hmm. One was identify stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Two was to plan stakeholder engagement. Mm -hmm. Three was to manage stakeholder engagement and four was to monitor stakeholder engagement. Mm. At least today, we spoke about the identified stakeholders. Right. That gave us our stakeholder register. Mm -hmm. And then we went further to talk about the stakeholder mapping strategy Correct. that helped us develop the power influence grid. The grid that will enable one manage is that can help you manage mm -hmm. stakeholders. Because this is a grid that will categorize stakeholders based on their power mm. and interest. So it's a grid that categorizes all stakeholders into four. So that you know whom you should give them more time on. With. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then who you should also know how to handle one way or the other. Right. So in our conversation next week, God willing, what, what should We're we expect? We're going to talk about the planning aspect of stakeholder management. That is mm. key. That's developing your strategy is the most important thing. The planning. Think, yes, the planning. So we're going to talk about plan stakeholder engagement. That's basically where we're going to start from. Mm. And if possible, we'll talk about the managed stakeholder engagement. That is also very important because as much as possible, stakeholders means you are dealing with people. Mm -hmm. There are going to be issues. There are going to be conflicts. So you need to understand conflict management. You need to understand issue management. People management. And people management. And also, you need to also look at how to motivate people, mm. resolve issues, and manage people too as well. So that's what we'll be delving into. Thank you so much. Thank winning. you so much, Latif. This has been Stakeholder Management, Understanding the World of Stakeholders. Today we dwelt on identifying the stakeholders. Next week, God willing, we move into the planning process. We've been having this conversation with Latif Abubakar here in the studio. God willing, next week, we come your way with yet another exciting edition of Masterclass. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you same time next week.